Welcome to the first video of our series, Omnis Studio Web Development Basics. In this series of training videos, we deal with the fundamental items of Omnis Studio in order to get started with the development of a web application. Each video in this series covers a specific subject and is primarily aimed at developers new to Omnis Studio. So, that's enough of an introduction. Let's get straight into the first topic. A Hello World application, probably the most typical way to get started with a new programming language, and we can't avoid it either. To be able to develop Omnis Studio, we first need the appropriate Omnis Studio development environment. If you already have got one and it is up to date, wonderful. Then you can now jump directly to the topic, create new project, using the chapter markers. For your information, you will find these chapter markers in each video if they make sense there. If you don't have an Omnis Studio development environment yet, you have various options for getting one. To keep it short here, for this video series, the Omnis Studio Community Edition, which is permanently free, is completely sufficient. If you would like to test the Professional Edition, you can also do this for 90 days free of charge. You can find the links to both versions in the video description. Now, let's go into Omnis Studio. The window we see here is called the Studio Browser. The name isn't too important, but when I talk about the Studio Browser in the following videos, you'll know what I mean. If you already have some experience in Omnis Studio, you will have realized that if you create a new project with the web and mobile template, you will have a ready-made Hello World application. Therefore, we will now create an empty project instead. In this case, I simply call this Hello World. To create a view that is later visible to the user, I click here on New Class and select Remote Form and call it Hello World. You can think of it a bit like a page or a sub-page of a website, and it is called Remote Form here in Omnis Studio. To edit the Remote Form, I double-click on it. What we now see here is the visual drag-and-drop editor, also known simply as the design editor. However, there is not much to see here right now, as we have not yet added anything. Since our Hello World should not just be a static text, but a text that appears as a pop-up when you press a button. So, of course, we need a button. We can drag and drop all components such as buttons, labels or static text, tables, graphs, and so on from the component store. This appendage here into the design window. To change the text on the button, I go to the window here on the right, also known as the property manager, and enter my desired text under text. I enter hello as the text, so that when you press the button, only world will be displayed. I think that's kind of cool. For this to happen, we need to edit the code behind the button. By behind the button, I actually mean in the dollar event method, or in other words, the method that is triggered when something happens to the button, in this case, when you have pressed the button. Double-clicking on the button here in the editor takes us directly to the event method of the clicked button. It already says on event click. This means if clicked, then. This means that all lines that come after this line are executed when this button is clicked. In our case, world should be displayed as a message. To do this, I enter in the next line, do dollar cinst dot dollar show message world. This call basically consists of three components. The initiator, do, the reference to the method, dollar cinst dot dollar show message, and the parameters, or in this case, just the one parameter, world. Do indicates that this line should represent a method call. $cinst.$showMessage references the $showMessage method from top to bottom. In this case, the starting point $cinst is the current instance. Here it is an instance of the remote form Hello World. With the dot we go one step deeper, and $showMessage is then a method, also recognizable by the brackets, from the remote form instance. 
We did not have to create this beforehand, as it is an inbuilt method. And in the brackets, we pass the value world as a parameter, as this is to be displayed. By the way, if we take a quick look at the class methods here, we should also find the dollar show message method among the built in methods marked in brown. There it is. So, to cut a long story short, we want to test the form because we are ready. You can start the test directly from the editor with the key combination Command T or, for Windows users, with Control T. Yes, wonderful. Let's see if the button also works. Perfect. If the application looks different in your browser in your test than in the design editor, i.e. in this visual drag and drop editor, then try making the browser window smaller or larger. You may just see a different layout breakpoint. I'll show you in the next video exactly what the layout breakpoint is and how you can use it to create views for different devices such as smartphones. The library used in this video is also available for download. You can find the link to it in the video description. I hope you enjoyed it and were able to learn something. As I said, we'll take a look at the layout breakpoints in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care.